Okay, Alvin, so I'm back. So now we've got the cam. What I've done is I've increased the uh, um, lobe separation to 112, actually 112.4. It's more than I'd really want to run, but I'm trying to make uh, an illustration. I've increased the duration to 215, and I've increased the lift to uh, almost 600 lift, which is overdoing it a little bit. I'll tell you what, I'll take a little bit out of it. We'll reduce that to 0.3. I've got one eight rockers on this illustration. Um, it's just because I'm saving it over from another model. Okay, so now we're going to run the simulation again. Uh, calculate horsepower, and we'll run it. Run, watch it run through its cycle. So what we've done is we've uh, changed the cylinder head, changed the intake manifold, and changed the camshaft. And we're still running the compression ratio at the same. We'd notice that the airspeed on this has actually increased. Now we're looking at a peak at a higher RPM, 3,750 RPM, and 568 foot-pounds of torque. There's the graph. And let's compare that graph to the one we did before. Saving a name for a call it modified origin. So now we're going to graph these two together. And you can see here, this is the torque lines, that this was the original low RPM engine. And I've changed the camera manifold. I've given up power under, let's see here, um, crossover point is right around 3000 RPM. So I could move this curve down and over here, so basically bring it back around here more, depending on what we're doing. So if we're targeting a specific RPM, then we put the torque curve where we want. So let's say right now we're looking at uh, 3600 to 4200, okay? So um, if we were wanting to run the engine right around this peak right here, I would use the camshaft I have. We're looking at a substantial increase in power that comes from RPM, which as I mentioned in the email came from airspeed velocity. Now let's leave that model the same as it was, but I'm going to put a short cam back in it and see what impact the other changes I had made. Now, now we'll go back to our camshaft and we'll take that duration back out again. One, nine, five. We'll leave the lobe separation in there, see how it affects it. And it's going to say it's got way more lift than it's supposed to have, but we'll just ignore that. Calculate. See, it's saying that it has more lift than it's realistic. And we'll run it through the cycle again. The above line is actually showing pressure in the intake and exhaust ports, which uh, would actually be uh, vacuum. You can see here the exhaust is actually making some pressure, whereas the uh, The intake, you can see, is down right here compared to the exhaust. The intake is way down here. Because you do make a little bit of pressure on the intake. Okay, and let's take a look at that graph. And we'll compare it with the last one. Now we're looking at three engines. You can see here, by taking duration out of it, by putting the same cam that was in the or origin motor, that I've pulled the green curve here, brake torque, I've pulled it back. The other modifications to the engine, the cylinder heads predominantly, and of course the intake manifold, is what's keeping the power out here. See, I gave up that much just with the cam, pulled it back. So, 
by changing the length of the runners I can bring this height down so this program is really good for modeling things and um, if you're able to actually build an engine like intake manifold and build your own exhaust system things like that you can really take advantage of this programming if you're just buying a factory manifold or an aftermarket manifold and um, the exhaust system that they provide then you're limited to those things but this is a great modeling program that allows you to do what ifs and actually achieve dramatic results then of course you have to prove it in the real world but anyway that's an overview of the engine trans um, um, uh, rather performance trans engine analyzer pro